you guys have asked me to talk about this topic so it's finally here we are talking about red light therapy like what is this all about i hear about it on tiktok on instagram and i just wanted to know is this the real deal or is it just a fad and remember i am not selling anything i don't sell red light therapy devices i'm just sharing my research and digging into the science behind it to see what it's about and this is why it took me so long to do it because i needed time to research because i research all my own content anyway before we jump into red light therapy, I want to let you know how to reach me and my team. So if you're listening to me on your podcast while you are mowing your lawn, you know who you are or doing anything else. And today I am wearing, I don't know, this orange, is it yellow? I'm not really sure. And my hair is a bit of a mess, but we're here. Okay. So I hope you enjoy it. And wherever you are, I have a totally free video course for you. You can just get it on a link tree on Instagram or TikTok. There's a link somewhere or on the website and it's totally free. Enjoy. Okay. So without further ado, let's get to red light therapy. I usually start with definitions, but today we're starting with a history lesson. You're welcome. Because before we discuss what red light therapy is, let's take a little trip back in time to see where red light therapy began. So it began way back when, way before any of this technology, right? In the ancient Egyptians, Greeks, Romans, they had this hunch that sunlight could make you feel better. And they would hang out in the sun to help heal their cuts, soothe their skin troubles, or just to boost their mood. Kind of intuitive, and we know that it's going to kind of help, but skipping ahead to just over like a century ago when a Danish doctor named Niels Reinberg Feinsen. I am sure I'm pronouncing it wrong. I am sorry, Mr. Niels, but it is what it is. Anyway, he started digging into this whole light as medicine idea, and he figured out that certain types of light can treat certain diseases. This was such a big discovery that he even won a Nobel Prize. Now, he didn't invent red light therapy, but he paved the way to using light for healing. In the 1960s, lasers were invented, and that changed everything because lasers allowed doctors to control light, how, what kind of light, how strong it was. And at first, it was mostly used for surgery, but soon enough, researchers found that low-level laser light could be used to help treat many health problems. This discovery led to something called low-level laser therapy or photobiomodulation. Who cares? I'm just giving you the history. And eventually, it became what we now know as red light and red light therapy. So that was the history lesson. Now we're going to go over to definitions because I always start with definitions. To understand red light therapy, you have to talk about wavelength. Okay, Every color that you see has a wavelength. Red light is one of the colors visible on the rainbow. And it's often associated with warmth, right? Because we see it in the sunrise and the sunset. And the wavelength of red light therapy is approximately 620 to 750 nanometers. Do you need to know that? No. But when you start shopping, it's going to come up. So you're welcome. Think of the light wavelength like a radio frequency that can only reach certain channels. Wavelength matters because different lengths of light have different impacts on our body. And red light has a specific wavelength that can penetrate through the skin and talk to ourselves, which gets them working and boosting our health. We're going to talk more about that. So think of it like when red light is like picking the right temperature for your shower, not too hot, not too cold, just perfect. And this wavelength is about choosing that right kind of light that can speak to your body cell and encourage them to kick it into high gear. In red light therapy, you're actually dealing with two types of light, red and near infrared. They're kind of like siblings in the same family, but a little unique. So red is the visible one. It's the kind you see in the sun, sunrise, etc. Now it takes care of your skin's top layer, talks to the cells, tell them to make more collagen. We'll talk about that. Keeps your skin fresh and repairs little damages. Near infrared light is the invisible one. You can't see it, but it works like a deep tissue massage, right? Really getting into the muscles and the bones, helping you mend on a deeper level. So when you get red light therapy devices, there's a spectrum that includes both the red and the near infrared. So you get from 620 all the way to 1200 nanometers. The reason we use this range is because that's where the magic happens for health. Okay, so that's where you want to go for it. So you have the red light, which is on the lower end, 620 to 750. And that's for that on the surface issues like skin health. And then you have the near infrared light, which is that goes deeper and into like the muscle and the tissue repair. Okay, so that's how you understand the spectrum red light devices. Okay, now how does it work? So we just talked about the spectrum, but how does it work? Like what, how does it do its magic? I got it. There's nanometers, it's 1200, it's 600, but like why does it work? So here's how it goes. 
I'm going to take a pause here because I'm bringing you all back to high school biology. And I'm really sorry for those of you who have PTSD for high school biology. I know I did. I hated it. It was after lunch. I was always tired. Couldn't concentrate. But anyway, here we are. In order to understand red light therapy, we need to talk about the mitochondria. Okay, you're welcome. Mitochondria, the power plant. This power plant, this energy, the battery of the cell, it produces energy in a form that our cells can use. That form is called ATP, and our mitochondria really have to be healthy to function properly. Now, here's where red light therapy comes in. Mitochondria needs light to work at its best. Specifically, they thrive with wavelengths provided by red light. So when your skin is exposed to this red and near infrared light, the photons penetrate the skin and are absorbed by the mitochondria. This boosts their performance and leads to an increase in ATP. More ATP means more energy. More energy means you can repair and regenerate. And that is how red light therapy works. Okay, so think of mitochondria as the workers in the factory producing ATP. And when the factory workers are happy, aka stimulated by light, they produce more goods, more ATP. This increased production doesn't just mean the cells have more energy, it means that they can do their jobs better, faster, more efficiently, including repairing damage, rejuvenating you and themselves, and returning yourself to a healthier state. So basically, red light therapy charges our mitochondrial batteries, allowing them to repair and renew. So now that we understand it globally, let's talk specifically about what it does. One, reduces something called oxidative stress. Oxidative stress happens when harmful substances called free radicals, they start building up in your bodies, in your bodies, I guess all of your bodies or your body. These free radicals can damage your cells. Think of it like rust damaging a car if it's not kept clean. So the red light therapy helps keep these free radicals at bay, making sure your body keeps running smoothly. Now, just to get technical, it doesn't get rid of all oxidative stress because you do need some, but keeps balance so that you don't have too much and cause harm. The next thing it does, reduce inflammation. Now, if you're watching me, you should know by now that everything I talk about is inflammation, right? If you're not well, you have inflammation. Of course, we need some inflammation. It's your body's personal alarm system. It jumps into action when you get hurt or when germs invade, tries to heal you and keep you safe. But sometimes it goes overboard, that chronic inflammation doesn't know when to stop. And that's when you get the headaches, the joint pain, the I don't feel good itis, the diseases, the diagnoses, right? All of that is inflammation. So red light therapy is a way of reducing inflammation in a non-invasive way, right? In a gentle way, you're just lying down, getting those rays and inflammation is calming down. Not only does it help with the mitochondria and the free radicals, but it increases circulation, which we'll talk about. And it reduces something called cytokines. And those are the cells responsible for inflammation. So far, so good. What's the next thing that red light therapy does? Sure. Great question. Let me tell you. It improves blood flow. This is so cool because red light therapy actually increases your circulation. When your body is exposed to red or near infrared light, the bodies respond by increasing activity, especially the cells that line our blood vessels. This exposure to red light stimulates the cells and kickstarts a process that actually grows new blood vessels. And if that wasn't technical enough, it actually increases something called VEGF, if you must know, vascular endothelial growth factor, and something called nitric oxide. The VEGF promotes more blood vessels, and the nitric oxide opens them up, widens them, vasodilates them, so you have this increased circulation which really helps repair because we need things to move in our body to renew and rejuvenate. So red light therapy utilizes your own process to increase and create new vessels and expand them, improving your circulation. What else does it do, you might ask? Another great question. It increases collagen production. Okay, now first of all, a quick moment, what is collagen? Like I know we put it in our protein, some of us put it in our coffee, awesome, I do it too. But what is it? It's the most abundant protein in our body. It's critical for bone, joint, skin, hair, tendons, ligaments, teeth, you name it. Collagen pretty much holds us together. And the more you can produce naturally, the better. Now you take it collagen supplements or creams to improve your skin or your joint. But of course, there's no substitute for having your body make more of the real thing, right? And that's where red light therapy comes in. It stimulates natural collagen production. 
in order to make collagen, we need energy from the mitochondria, which we just talked about, and this helps you create more collagen, which helps you heal and repair. We're not done because red light therapy has also been shown to help thyroid. Now, I know so many of you listening have thyroid issues, so I want to take a moment to talk about that. Quick reminder, thyroid, it's your control center. It's like a thermostat for your metabolism, and it's the process that helps you turn your food into energy. Red light therapy makes sure that this center is running smoothly, and it encourages your thyroid to produce more T4, which is what it's supposed to do, and it helps fight inflammation. And we know that if we have autoimmunity here or anywhere, we have inflammation, and the red light therapy has a way of calming things down and cooling things down, which your thyroid really needs. And if all of this was not magical enough, red light therapy is also a stress buster. Okay, red light therapy can help you relax, lower your stress levels, and in doing so, it calms everything down. First of all, you're lying down, and usually your eyes are closed, so you're already relaxed. But also, this red light therapy, this healing and repairing that's happening, it just brings the whole system down and just calms it down. So it's an amazing stress buster. Now, a common question that's often asked is, are there any downsides? And honestly, I really, really, really looked and I couldn't find any. I came up with a list of like potential maybes, but like, you'll see what I mean. So you could have eye strain or damage if you stare at it directly. But how about just don't stare at it directly? Okay, so close your eyes or wear eye protection if you're going to be there for a long time. But honestly, I'm looking at this ring light right now, and that's more eye strain than the red light therapy is. Skin irritation. In rare cases, some people may experience redness, irritation, or rash, especially for somebody who's photosensitive. So just take it easy. Don't go in for a 45-minute session. Like, make sure that your skin can handle it. Some people can experience headaches from it. And there is a world where you can have an overuse effect if you use, you know, over too much time. But in reality, the red light therapy devices that are approved to be used for home don't usually have that issue. So I really couldn't find downsides unless you're super, super sensitive. So always run this by a medical provider and do your own research and see if it helps you. But that's what I come up with in my research. So quick recap, bottom line, red light therapy is the real deal. It can help with so many things. And now you understand why. Boosts mitochondrial activity, reduces free radicals, lowers inflammation, produces collagen, stress buster, all of which helps our bodies heal and perform better, all by using light. I hope this helped you guys minimize the research for you because that's what I wanted to do. As always, if you want to reach me and my team, find us at The New Method. Actually, I lied. I changed all my handles to Dr. Efrat Lamandre instead of The New Method. So find us at Dr. Efrat Lamandre and continue being the game changer in your life because you always knew there was a better way. I hope this helped. I'll talk to you guys soon.